Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to do a nice introductory topic today, calculating and interpreting an F statistic for the purposes of joint significance testing following an ordinary least squares regression in Stata. So let's bring up some example data from our, our old friends at uh, Boston College. So we'll use that BC use command. Uh, make sure you install that uh, do file. Uh, so SSC install BC use and we'll bring up the wage one data set. Check their website for the list of all of the uh, data files they have available from the Woldridge textbook. Uh, so once again, we're going to look at kind of a, an example wage determination model. And the idea of joint significance testing, of course, is to see whether or not a, a set of variables adds significant, useful explanatory power to our model. And the idea of the F statistic calculation is to compare the performance of two competing models, one with the variables in question, what we'll call our unrestricted model, versus the restricted model, which sets those coefficients to zero, takes the variables out of the, uh, of the estimation. So as you can see here for our little example, we might uh, run an ordinary squares regression with wage as our dependent variable, uh, level of education of the individual, level of work experience. And then we might add in, uh, say, two uh, binary dummy variables, one for marital status, equal to one if the individual is married, zero otherwise. Uh, and then we might be concerned about uh, racial bias in, in wages. Uh, so we have a dummy variable equal to one if the individual is non-white, uh, zero otherwise. So that's going to form our our unrestricted model. We've got our 526 observations. Uh, and we might put together those uh, dummy variables, uh, those characteristics into our null hypothesis, right? So our joint significance test is gonna be whether or not those two variables, marital status and uh, racial status, add significant explanatory power. So that's in our notation here, the coefficient B3 and B4 uh, both equaling to zero. So the competing model here is going to be our restricted model that by definition will impose the restrictions in the null hypothesis. So it's just going to be exactly what we just had. So in, in Windows, we do the page up button. That'll bring up our most recently typed command. And we can just take out those two variables and rerun the model. So those are the, the, the building blocks of our F statistic calculation. And of course, as you know from your econometrics textbook, right, our F statistic uh, formula is built around this simple comparison of the performance of the two models, the sum of squared residuals from the restricted model versus the sum of squares for the unrestricted. Uh, and then in the numerator, our degrees of freedom here uh, are going to be, in our case here, the the number of coefficients set to zero. So the degrees of freedom in minus k minus one for the restricted versus the unrestricted. And that difference is gonna be, well, how many coefficients we set to zero, the difference in k in the two variables. And then in the denominator here, it's gonna be our unrestricted sum of squares uh, divided by n minus k minus one. And again, that k is from our unrestricted model. So you may recognize that, uh, that denominator term as our sigma hat squared. So all we have to do now is find the relevant numbers from our two regressions, right? So Stata conveniently as part of its default uh, output gives us the residual sum of squares right, for each model right here. So for the RSSU over here, it's gonna be that 5441 and the RSSR the restricted, restricted sum of squares is going to be that 55, 48. Right? So we plug all that in. So here's the difference in the sum of squares, the difference in the n minus k minus 1s between the two models. So the 523, which is 526, uh, in both cases, minus 4 minus 1 for the unrestricted, minus 2 minus 1, so 523 for the restricted, and then the same number here, the uh, SSR U over N minus K minus one. So I'm sure, uh, just like me, you could do that 
that math in your head, and you can double check that. Comes out to 5.12. Uh, and then we figure out, okay, what, what exactly does that mean? Well, in order to evaluate a test statistic, right, we have to compare it to the relevant critical value. So we jump to the back of our textbook here. Sorry, that's so small, you can't really see it. Uh, but what you'll find, every econometrics textbook is going to have an, an F critical table. Uh, here the example is for a 10% uh, significance level. And the relevant critical value is going to depend on those two degrees of freedom. The numerator degrees of freedom, which is Q, the number of coefficients set to zero, right? in this case is two, and then n minus k minus one of the unrestricted, the denominator degrees of freedom, which in this case was the 521, uh, and our table here jumps from 120 up to infinity. So we'll use that bottom value of about 2.3. So we surpass that critical value, we conclude we do have significant explanatory power. We reject the null uh, that the two coefficients are zero. The model is improved uh, by adding in that non-white and uh, marital status dummy variables. So obviously, that's the, that's the hard way to do it. That's the long way to do it. Um, in general, we're going to have Stata do that calculation for us, but it's always good to run through that uh, exercise at least once uh, in our life. But in general, we can get that output straight from our unrestricted model. So let's go ahead and run that model again. So one way to do it is just to type in test, and then instead of the coefficients, b3 and b4, we type in the names of the variables that we're testing. Uh, in this case, married, and the coefficient on married is going to be equal to zero, and it's also going to be equal to the coefficient on non-white. We're going to set both of those equal to zero. So we are specifically writing out that uh, the conditions of that null hypothesis. And we get exactly the same number here from exactly the same calculation, so that 5.12. Uh, and saving us the trouble of looking up the critical value, uh, Stata gives us the probability or the p-value. As long as that value is less than 0.01, we can reject at 1% significance, less than 0.05, uh, 5% less than 0.10, 10%. So here we can reject at, at beyond that 1% significance or 99% confidence. And then lastly, uh, the, the test command is already set up for this joint significance. So all we really have to do is just list out the variables. We don't have to specify that we're setting them equal to zero. That's the default. So we can just go test, married, non-white, space in between, and get exactly the same answer and the immediate conclusion that we have joint significance in those two variables. So if you have any questions on this or if you uh, have any suggestions of where to go next, uh, put it down in the comments. Uh, if you found the video helpful, hit the like button. Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this, and we'll be doing about a video a week, both in Stata and in R, Introductory Econometrics, Advanced Econometrics, Time Series Econometrics, uh, hit the subscribe button. Hopefully you'll find this series of videos useful. Have a great day. Thank you.